Parents, what's the most shocking thing a teacher said about your child? My daughter Emma was always the quiet kid, never caused trouble, turned in her homework on time, sat in the middle of the classroom where teachers barely noticed her. Average grades, average everything. I figured she was just one of those kids who flies under the radar. Then came parent-teacher conferences in October. I'm sitting across from Mrs. Patterson, Emma's fourth grade teacher, expecting the usual, she's doing fine, no concern speech that I'd heard for three years straight. Instead, Mrs. Patterson pulls out the thick folder and sets it on the desk between us. She looks me straight in the eye and says something that made my stomach drop. I need to ask you something important. Has Emma ever been tested for giftedness? Because what she's doing in my classroom is honestly a little unsettling. I laughed. Emma? My Emma who struggles with basic math homework every night? I think you have the wrong kid, I said. Mrs. Patterson opened the folder. Inside were dozens of Emma's assignments, but they weren't the simple worksheets I helped her with at home. These were complex essays, advanced math problems, science projects that looked like high school level work. This is what Emma turns in when I give the class extended time to work independently, she explained. While other kids are finishing their regular assignment, Emma completes that, then does this. She showed me a five-page story Emma had written about time travel, complete with scientific theories and detailed character development. The vocabulary was college level. The concepts were things I barely understood. Here's her math work, Mrs. Patterson continued, flipping pages. Emma had solved advanced algebra problems by creating her own formulas. She'd written detailed explanations for each step that made perfect sense, but used methods they don't teach until eighth grade. And this, she said, pulling out a science report, is her analysis of the water cycle. She somehow connected it to economics and climate change. I had to look up half the terms she used. I stared at the papers, recognizing Emma's handwriting, but not understanding how this was possible. At home, she struggled with multiplication tables. She needed help with basic reading comprehension. There's something else, Mrs. Patterson said quietly. I've been watching Emma during regular class time. She deliberately gets problems wrong. She stops herself mid-sentence when answering questions. She's been hiding this for years. That night, I sat Emma down and asked her directly, why was she pretending to struggle with schoolwork? She looked at me with these tired eight-year-old eyes and said, because when I was in second grade, Mrs. Wilson told the smart kids they'd have to do extra work while everyone else got free time. And in third grade, Mr. Davis made the smart kids help teach the struggling kids instead of learning new things. I figured out that being smart at school meant more work, not more fun. So I learned to be average. It's easier, and the teachers leave you alone. My daughter had been dumbing herself down for two years because the school system punished intelligence with busy work. The next week, we had Emma tested. Her IQ came back at 156. Genius level. She'd been teaching herself advanced concepts from library books while pretending to struggle with homework designed for kids half her intellectual age. Mrs. Patterson helped us get Emma into the gifted program, but more importantly, she taught me to look closer at my quiet, average daughter. Turns out Emma wasn't flying under the radar. She was hiding in plain sight, protecting herself the only way an eight-year-old knew how. That night, I found Emma reading a physics book she'd checked out from the adult section of the library. When I asked her about it, she just shrugged. I wanted to understand how gravity actually works, not just that things fall down.